When I was a kid, I joined the football team and the baseball team and the swim team and the wrestling team. And, you know, my dad, you know, he was from the Philippines and he never ever played sports like that at all when he was growing up. So back in the day, right? So he, uh, he, since he never had those sports, I had to really rely on my coaches, my American coaches to teach me. And when learning a new sport, it's very important to know the rules, right? You guys, who believes in knowing the rules? I think we all should, right? Like, don't run in the wrong direction to the opposite end zone. <laughs> now, that never happened to Father Dindo, nope. I saw that in a movie though, I did. Don't put your wrestling opponent in an illegal hold. You might kill him. Again, that's not me. I didn't do that either, okay? My coaches, my wrestling coach especially, uh, all of them really, but my wrestling coach especially said to me that I need to be more aggressive. He would say, Dindo, you need to be more mean, like a mad dog and less like a priest. No, he, ne he, ne he never said that, he never said that. I added that last part. The rules are the rules. Basketball players can't kick the ball. They can never kick the ball. They can only pass the ball with their hands. Soccer players can't use their hands at all to touch the ball, but they can use their feet to dribble and kick the ball. Football players can't cross the line of scrimmage until the play begins, but they can maneuver in certain directions beforehand. The rules are the rules. And the rules, especially in sports, are very important. It makes sure that the athletes are kept in line so that the game can run smoothly and goals can be achieved. Now, the Lord Jesus, I mean, the Lord God gave us rules as well, the Ten Commandments, right? The basic rules to live a good and moral life, to keep all of our lives running smoothly with the goal of getting to heaven. That is the goal. All of us have that goal to win the race, to get to heaven. That can be achieved when we follow the rules. Each of us Christian athletes has our own Christian athletic adventure of running the race toward the prize of the eternal crown, the lifelong route of a path of moral living, striving for holiness. Now, there is clear teachings, right, from the Ten Commandments not to steal. We heard that in the second reading. Do not steal, not to commit adultery, to honor your father and your mother. Jesus as well brought up as a good Jewish boy followed all of these rules uh, of the law of Judaism. The gospel today, Jesus instructs his followers on how to reprimand people, okay? How to reprimand them. It appears that Jesus is reinforcing this rule-based authority because the Jewish law, of course, is very strict. Like you can get stoned if you commit adultery. But Jesus here, he is proposing something else. We have to listen to this very carefully. Jesus is, propo is proposing a more merciful way of being reprimanded for not following the rules. He's saying to us to talk to the sinner. Talk to the sinner directly you know, when they're doing something wrong. Bring in a witness or two to help you, you know, and then if all else fails, you know, involve the church and the church will help you, okay, to get this person on the right track. The goal for Jesus is simply not to reprimand, to bad mouth, to berate the sinner, but to rebuild the relationship with the sinner and also with the relationship of the sinner with God. The desire is to correct uh, with love. Everything has to come out of love when we correct people, got that? All correction, when you have to correct someone in your family or in, in, in work or whatever situation it is, any correction must be rooted from love of your neighbor. Do it with love. 
I like to call it the bologna sandwich, okay? When you ever, you want to, to correct somebody, do it this way. This is what Father Dindo does. First, you say something really positive about the person, what they're doing, how you like this or that with, their, with what they're doing. Then slip in the baloney, like what is the problem? Try to tell them that they need to uh, maybe work on this, work on that. And then sh show them the examples that, that they're you know, not following well. And then finally, end positive, okay? And really positive with a loving message. That's what I call the bologna sandwich. It works all the time. It manages addressing conflicts, addressing conflicts successfully, using uh, the, the body of our love as the body of Christ, our family, looking out for our members. Because love means not wanting bad things to happen to its members. Remember that, loving means not wanting bad things to happen to its members. Saving members from suffering and pain in the end, that, you guys, is love of neighbor. Jesus teaches us that love is the fulfillment of the law. All of the commandments roll up into love of neighbor. Because if you love your neighbor, you're not gonna steal from them. You're not gonna covet their goods. You're not gonna be covet, uh, committing adultery against them. If you love your neighbor, none of that is gonna happen. Love your neighbor as yourself. That is what Jesus puts out today. Also because positivity is love. I want you to know that positivity is love. Love is always positive. Hate, on the other hand, is always negative. So that's always being seen in the eyes of our Lord Jesus. Because what Jesus wants is this, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Not just for some, but for ever. Everyone. May the love you guys and the mercy of our God bring our lives to the understanding that love can change all things, especially ourselves.